Let's put that there. Alrighty. So we've got this, which is awesome. Thank you guys so much for 100 subscribers. Um, I'll probably leave like a, a sneaky dog pic, you know, just to show my thanks, I guess. This tutorial is gonna go over the second part of the dungeon generator. So where we left it off last time, I can't actually really see anything. So a little tip, you can just click this button here and uncheck the skybox. So it's a lot easier to see within the scene. Now, we can't see our bottom door either, so what we'll have to do is we'll have to make a new sorting layer, and I'm just going to call this outdoor layer, okay? And we can just assign it to door, so now the door sprite will always be on top of everything else. So I'll just assign that to everything. Alright, cool. Now the next thing we need to do um, as we wrote in our code within the last uh, tutorial in our room code, we wrote on draw gizmos. So this is going to draw a wire cube, so a rectangle based on our width and height. So if we go to our room and we change our width and height, so if I put it at maybe like 18, we get a red line here. And if we change the height to maybe like 10, we get a nice rectangle. So this rectangle is going to define um, the exact connections between the rooms. So a room will be placed exactly at this position, to the right or to the top or to the left or to the bottom. So this will be interchangeable for um, you guys, but I feel like 20 is a good number and maybe 12, Ooh, it's a bit too high, maybe 11. So I'm just sort of putting it around the center. Okay, so all of the rooms will be this size and this is what we will constitute as a singular coordinate, if that makes any sense at all. <laughs> Alrighty, so now we're going to want to go into our room controller. So uh, within our room controller, we want to start making it so we can grab items from this scene and put it within our main scene, okay? So if we just go to our main basement scene, cool. And we go back into our code. I think the first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're going to make a method that deals with loading our scenes, okay? So public void whoop, load room, okay? Now this will take in the string of the name um, our X coordinate and our Y coordinate, okay? And we want to grab our room info, okay? And this is gonna be some new room data and we're actually going to assign it to new room info, okay? And we're gonna set our new room data dot name is gonna be equal to our name. Okay, and the same with our X and Y. Gonna equal to X and new room data dot Y is gonna be equal to Y. Okay, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna be able to NQ up our room for the um, scene manager to load for us. So we should grab our load room queue and we can enqueue it, okay? So that's basically going to add our new room data to the queue, okay? And we'll be able to do something with that, okay? The next thing we would generally wanna do is create an IE, a coroutine, so an IE numerator, okay? This is gonna be our load room routine. Now we're creating a coroutine, um, which has room info, and we'll just call it info. Um, and we're creating this uh, because our scenes aren't always going to load instantly. They're going to take some time depending on how many items we have in. So we want to be able to load it up without starting the next scene to load up so it doesn't like lag our game up or anything. So I'm just going to grab a string and I'm going to call it level name. Okay, 
Actually, I'll probably just call it room name because it's more relevant. <laughs> and I'm going to grab the current world name, okay? And it's going to be plus the info dot name, okay? Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do what's called an async operation, okay? And I will leave a link down below if uh, to read up on it later. Uh, hopefully that will give a better understanding of it because I don't know how well I can <laughs> um, explain it. But basically, we're going to grab the scene manager and we're going to load the scene but asynchronously, okay? And we're going to grab our room name for the name. And the mode is load scene mode dot additive okay setting this additive mode will make it so our scenes will actually overlap and this is going to be useful because we want to be able to put all of our rooms within the same scene so we can access them and we can do stuff with them so to make our coroutine happy we're going to do a while loop and we're going to do while our room is not done loading okay then we're going to return nothing okay so we're just gonna wait until we've done loading and then we will return something the next method we're actually going to create is um, being able to register our room okay so register room and this is gonna take in our room room okay so uh, this is going to actually set our room within our scene and with the right uh, coordinates in the world view, okay? So our room dot transform dot position is going to equal to a new vector 3, okay? We can grab the current load room data dot x, okay? And then we're going to multiply that by the room dot width. For our x okay so that's basically going to so if it's at one it's going to be one times uh what did we set it to i think it was 20 so one times by 20 it's going to be at position 20 so one over if it's at two over it's going to be two times if it's negative one it's going to be negative over which is how we want to set it in the world so it's like very nice and I guess symmetrical and evenly split together. So we've got our current load room data dot y and we're also going to multiply that by our room dot height. Okay. And lastly for the z I'm just going to set that to zero and I want to make sure that put our closing bracket and our semicolon. That's a really bad closing bracket. All right, just check that there. <laughs> My bad. Um, actually, we have uh, so beginner mistake right here. Make sure you put the normal brackets instead of the curly brackets. Alrighty. So once we've set the position, um, I'm basically I'm gonna grab the room dot x's position and we're gonna set it to the current load room dot dot x okay I'm gonna grab the room dot y position I'm gonna set to current load room dot dot y and we're gonna set the room dot name equal to our current world name plus and now so this will say basement and then we can say Put a dash maybe and then we can grab our current load room data dot name and then we can put a space and then we can grab our room dot x plus oops plus a comma okay and then our room dot y so we can see uh, within the name are the coordinates relative to where it's placed so this will be good just to have a look at make sure it's like in the correct position and yeah now 
the last thing we're going to do is we're going to set the room dot transform dot position equal to this transform okay alrighty actually what's wrong here okay so I could grab the parent sorry and get rid of the position <laughs> my bad so the room dot transform dot parent is going to equal to the transform we don't want to actually set its position because we're already setting it okay now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our is loading room and we're going to set that equal to false because we've finished loading our room now so after we've set the room to false we need to add it to our our loaded rooms list so we can do loaded rooms dot add and we'll just add our room cool now we have this does room exist and we're not actually referencing it anywhere so something that is pretty cool that we can do is we can do a check to make sure our room exists before we load a room so we don't load rooms that overlap on each other and to do this we can just do a simple if does room exist so we can just grab our x and our y okay equals true okay so actually don't even need that we can just have if does room exist and if it does then we want to return we don't want to load this room at all because the room already exists here what we can do from here is i can just add a void star just for testing purposes and we can actually just call load room and what room do we want to load we want to probably load our empty room okay and we can load it at maybe zero and zero or actually we'll load our start room okay at zero and zero and maybe we want to load a couple of rooms to our left and right so we can make these ones empty maybe we can have this at to our right we can have this one to the left um, we can have this one up and we can have this one down okay so if we go ahead and head in here we've got to make sure these are in our build settings so I'm gonna add this scene I don't know why it was deleted um, we don't actually have an empty scene never mind I'm just gonna go ahead and do that right now so I'm gonna duplicate this and in here I'm just gonna rename it to basement um, empty okay and I'm simply just gonna remove our start okay okay so if we go ahead and run that if you say so excuse me thanks Siri it doesn't actually load our room up so if we go and have a look we're not actually calling our room routine anywhere so to do that we can add an update void so we can go void update okay and I'm going to just update our whoops update our room queue because our room queue just stays stagnant it doesn't change at all so we're gonna add these to the queue but we're not actually gonna do anything with them so if we create this update room queue okay now we can check if we're loading a room okay then return we don't want to do anything but if our load room queue dot count is equal to zero we also want to return okay because there's going to be there's going to be nothing in the queue so we're not really going to want to do anything at all but else if there's stuff in the queue then we can grab our load room data and we can load room queue dot dq so we can remove it from the queue okay then we can check is loading room to true 
and we can start a co-routine which will be our load room routine and we're just going to grab the current load room data okay so if we save that go back in here now so i've just created a layer behind and i've just put that in here just to let you guys ah uh, no but if we run the game now we should get our starting room which is cool but we don't actually get everything else from it Alrighty, so I've just removed a couple of things from the scene and the last thing we need to do is we need to actually register our room. So this isn't going to get called within our room controller, we need to call it from our room. So as soon as our room exists, then we can just call uh, room controller dot instance dot register room and we'll just pass this within, okay? So if we have a look now, it should register our room. Perfect. So we've got four rooms that spawn and we've got doors on every single side. Okay, the, the rooms aren't aligned properly, uh, which is a bit annoying. I can just simply move the camera down. There we go. So, let's put that there, alrighty. So we've got this, which is awesome. The next tutorial is gonna go over uh, being able to walk through the doors and maybe changing our camera. So once we walk up here, we wanna be able to make it so it looks like we're in this room, right? Uh, or vice versa with all the other rooms. And then, after that, we can start working on our algorithm, which is actually going to generate our rooms, which is pretty cool. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a thumbs up. Um, leave a comment if you have any questions or anything, I'll be able to answer it. I just wanted to say again, thank you so much for 100 subscribers. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.